Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to the extra time segment for Leicester 2, Everton 2. Everton have went in front, came from behind, all in one fatal swoop. It was a very exciting game for the neutral, but absolutely horrifying if you're an Everton fan. Um, it could have been worse, it could have been better. I'm joined by James and Paul. How are you feeling after that one? I'll go with you first, Paul. Um... More nervous and sick again because you know, I thought we were down after Newcastle um, last week. I thought, no, that's it. Um, our uh, manager doesn't have a clue, fans were just uh, um, from where I was, just seemed so so defeated. But then we had a, a good weekend results wise, all the team needed to drop points, drop points, and it held the door open for us again. And it's the hope that kills you, isn't mm-hmm. it? It's the hope that kills you, even if it's something that's. Depressing. Relegation in the sort of banal finality of something we just think, right, it's nailed on to happen. I don't have to feel bad about it anymore. Yeah, my nerves have gone out. Do you know what I mean? I just got about it. But when when the door itself open for you and you get a little bit of hope again, it just makes you feel even more nervous. And yeah, that was a game we had. We have to we have to win. We haven't won it. It's we haven't lost it either. It's just oh my God, it's Pressure's just been wrong. Yeah, I didn't think it could go that high. Yeah, I just think it was, it was like I didn't know what I, like what I would have made of a draw before the game. I don't know about you guys. Like, I didn't know whether I'd be happy with it, whether I would, whether I wouldn't be happy with it. It just be like an opportunity missed, but at the same time, like we they'll be demoralised as a team left that the game kind of threw it away. It's the pen and. No, it depends if you go to the Yeah, it's it's whether you're a glass half full or a glass half empty person. Um, I before the game wouldn't have been happy with a draw, I wouldn't have took it, but then you flip it around and as you mentioned, they were two one up, they missed the penalty. One up and that's effectively game over. So finish five and one if that went to the yeah, one. That would have been game over, that would have been season over, that would have been relegation nailed on, that would have just been it. But you really be disappointed when you Game from eat like that. You, you don't want to be on the players uh, and the manager over it because it was, could have been so so much worse. But uh, in the day, um, twenty four hours later, at points at a relegation rival, a good result, not necessarily. It was a light to like get a proper point there. It was a relegation six pointer, wasn't it? I mean, we didn't we didn't take the you know, full six points. To, no, that's it. Like James, you'll say, on it, mate. Were you happy with the point? Or happy with the points? To bottle say, is it really? Because like again, when when they hit the bar and they had the penalty, thinking like when they got the penalty, that's how I felt after Burnley last season when we got beat by Burnley. I know it wasn't the end of the game, but it was like this. As, as you were saying, that, that was kind of like, yeah, I made it this now, and you think they're going to score the pen, and I wasn't even watching it. And then obviously I come down and see that we obviously saved, and we were still in the game. At that point, you take a point, yeah, because I still thought second half they were going to come out and didn't really, they had nothing second half. I think as the game went on, we went on for like another five, ten minutes, and we could have nicked it, but I was stressed up to my eyes by the end of the whistle there. I was... So exhausted by the whole game and just he's been over four left to go, isn't it? We're still in these games like they are at the minute. I said Paul was saying after Newcastle eleven around, it was just people who were left there anyway, because there wasn't many that was resonating on everyone's face and so everyone kind of made peace of it then. But getting yeah, the results, we got good results last season, like when teams weren't expected to were maybe expected to get some from games or when they were winning games, they got turned around on them and Good results for us. It's happened again this weekend, and we still couldn't take full advantage. So, yeah, it's just kind of that you've accepted it, but you're getting real back. Well, I'm going to adjust out, sticking in, and the fact that for as long as it's only you need to win one game and you're out of it, you, isn't, you can't just give up, can you? You can't just give in and say, Well, yeah, that's it. Because that's it. Really, yeah, you to play for it, isn't it? There's not, not, not a lot of things now, though, is it really? Like that's that's where Monday was or yesterday was so important. In terms of who we play, we don't play Leicester or Leeds or Forest now. 
Um, so it's, it's out of our hands now, which whereas last season, uh, did it ever leave our hands last season? I can't yeah, it did. Uh, on a few, I think after the derby, we were definitely in was it the delegation. Yeah, was it, yeah. Well, I think we got about four, is it? To be honest, after the bar, yeah, it was really bad, yeah. At that stage, so. I think it was last season because there was two teams below us were gone, like they like Watford and Norwich, where even like Southampton are still in it. No, they are down, really. Like, I'd be shocked, but they also want them to win. Then they're only going to be, I think, maybe two points behind us, and it's just. Yeah, nice. it's, it's one last season, it was always being in the leads. It was like one into three. Yeah. This time it's two into four. Go. It's like so much harder. It's so it, much harder. well, it's it, it, immediately a bigger chance of going down. So it's just it's, it's it makes so it all the more near. Yeah, nail by I was absolutely. I was on time to hook yesterday, watching the second half. Where it's once we equalised, and the you know, other thought. I think what a lot of people have, have noticed now they're getting upset with Sean Dykes is the lack of ambition to go and win games. I think. Given the plight we're in, we need to win a game to get out the bottom. Is that like what's annoying a lot of people to think about Dice Dice just not giving enough to maybe push us to win a game instead of maybe he's too too often goes? I think there's um, a perception amongst the fan base, and I'm sure he'll push, he'd get on this if he and sorry in a post match interview. But there's a um it seems or it's coming across he's not um, urgent enough type thing. It's mm. like he, as, as if he doesn't realise how dire and desperate the situation is. Um, he thinks that maybe a draw is a better result than what it really is. Yeah. Now, he will point to the fact, if I'm sure, in his own defence, that in the situation plenty of times with Burnley, and he almost always got them into trouble. Um, his kind of mindset and approach usually was um, proved to be right, right one. Because how many times did Burnley look like they were going to go and then the end of the game? So they didn't get too locked down in the anxiety. So um, I can see kind of what Sean's, why Sean's like thinks this right approach. Everton fans and Burnley fans are completely different. And part of your job as a manager is to, you know... You manage the fans as much as you manage the players sometimes. You do, yeah. You can't always just indulge the whims of fans, but you've got to communicate with fans. You've got to... You've got to have a certain um, method and a way of playing and certain tactics you're going to implement and you're going to stick with it. I think he needs to do a better job of explaining to fans why he is doing what he's doing, why he doesn't feel like he's bringing players on and to win a game, why he's not making something reactive and not, um, not proactive. Evenly. So I, I do think a lot of the criticism he's getting is valid, personally, but I do also... Uh, if he was to turn around and say, right, this is why I'm doing it, and if he just has to do it, then I think that would go a long way to ensure the fans. He's not doing that so far. He just, like, he's just kind of shrugging his shoulders, shoulders, yeah. shoulders and saying, well, this is what I do. You have to get on with it, sort of thing. And I don't really think that's the case. Oh, any other manager, sports, I think supporters. It's good to have a manager who's quite stoic in that respect, but I think the fact of the matter is we're all the supporters so emotional at the moment is that Stoicism is what we're doing right now. None of us have been remotely stoic for the vast majority of the season, have we? No. The vast majority of our time sport and Everton, we wear our hearts on our sleeves a lot of the time, don't we? Yeah, and that's just a cultural thing. That just part of um, where, who we are as, as people, not even sponsors. <laughs> not even just scouts, because we've got fans guys into the city. Who we are as a fan base, it's, we've got, we like players who fire you, wear the hearts on the sleeve. Players who you like to be able to see their emotion, when they're upset, you want to see them happy, you want to see them angry or they're confused. Just kind of have the body language of somebody who is seemingly unaffected, it kind of alienates people. And what what I just experienced at the moment, he's alienating people because a lot of people can't relate to his kind of body language and his way of thinking or the way that it's coming across. But I do agree with the overall point. Trying to win games more, uh, more like should be more match rather than reactive. But uh, some of the criticism, I think, is maybe just kind of a little bit over the top. Definitely, we're being over the top. I think a lot of people have, you know, I've seen people call them a fraud and stuff on yeah. Twitter. Oh, yes, I've yeah. not really, I, I definitely don't agree with that. And I'm still, to be honest, 
regardless of I'm not, I'm not happy with how things are at the moment, but I don't know about you, I'm still behind in, in the long yeah, run. No, I mean, I think obviously it all kind of happens this season, we're obviously now at the end of the season, but I think, you know, also it's not, it's not the fact that we're different from Burnley fans, but also Burnley getting relegated and Everton getting relegated are two different things. Like Burnley over the last 50 years have been a second division football and they've been promoted. I think most four times now, I think, in the last, let's say, sort of half a century or whatever. So it's not like Burnley are a top division football club. You know, this is Everton who haven't been relegated since the 50s. It's a big difference. But I think, again, I, I've seen people call him a fraud and I don't fully understand it. I think obviously I wanted to see a sub, uh, substitute late last night. But at the same time, we all know that the bench is... Isn't great. It's not like there's like a bona fide match winner on the bench. Game. There's no game changes when you look down that bit. Yeah, and, I, and the, you know I, I respect that the, the wingers who were playing last night are good defensively, good at getting back, made a difference in the game. McNeil was playing really well. The Woody got back and forth. A mixed performance overall. But bringing on someone like Gray might not be the option. That you know in our heads, he, he's a player who can do whatever he wants to do in a, in a split second. But a lot of the time, he doesn't do it. And, I think overall, yeah, I do agree that we should be going to win more games. Um, I made this mistake last season nearly when we didn't go to win Watford. If you remember, we drew mm-hmm. nil there, which was if we went down, it wouldn't be because of that. It is a, yeah. as a result. Oh, that, was, that was 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 that I don't know who we could have had on the bench, but we had a couple of players from the last few years on the bench, like Allison or even from Miles on you think and I'd understand a bit more. Yeah, uh, you just hope that at least at least if you say the difference between Watford and Leicester, this was that we actually went for it last night and we had like three point five XG. We really tried to score the goal. He made two or three really good saves, Calvin's chance. It was different in that regard, but Going back to the important point about Dyche being experienced in this, that is kind of what I'm holding on to, is that he's fronting it up as like, yeah, it's fine, we will be all right come the end of it, but we're all in, we're a basket case, like, oh, God, because Everton are in a really perilous position. And if he leads us through it and he ends up winning a couple of games and fair play, we'd obviously say that he's handled it right, but this stage it is really hard to kind of fully back that because it's just such a... Dire situation. It's a results business, and we haven't yeah. been getting enough to put it all balls down. So let's be honest. And we've got to, we've got to win. We've been got to win at least one game, probably two. We've won six all season. So I'm explaining to someone the other day how we won yesterday. We could have theoretically lost every game this from now to the end of the season and been all right because we've had heads above water and results have to go our way. We've got to be out the box, we? exactly. But then you, you say you have to win two games, and after we've only really won four more than that between. Um, well, I think the, I think everyone's a bit more nervous with one Manchester City and yeah. even Brighton's going to be a Brighton's a top top ass. Game, like, Whereas I think the other the other two are the Wolves and Bournemouth are hugely winnable. It's out of our hands now because we've let Bournemouth get away because Wolves did what we've done replace the manager before the World Cup. They've now gotten away with and as we came on like they're going to be on the beach hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. If we were, I was thinking how how ironic would it be if Bournemouth when we should have got rid of Lampard, wasn't it? The first time, and then played him in the cup again. Third time playing him this season, and that ends up being the game that either sends us down or saves us. The yeah, irony obviously wouldn't be last on either. It's just there's a lot to ponder, but I think one thing I will touch on on a positive note that's like it does make a great deal of difference. Having Calvert Lewin back, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought Calvert Lewin looked we all. Um, get behind the ball, isn't it? Yeah, he's, yeah. You know, he's still a player who splits opinion. A lot of criticism he is very, very unfair. Yeah. 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 Some people need to be It should not matter what he does or pitch as long as he's playing anyone breaking the law, which he absolutely isn't. A lot of the other criticism we get want to be injured. You know, I saw, saw, yeah. saw an interview with him this morning um, where he said he's missed football so much. People, I think, have this idea that when players are injured, they just kind of they're normally in the gym, they have them constantly, but they're even harder than players who are fit in the game. And that's what Calvin Lewis has been doing. He's just been to get on the pitch and he's been hanging on to the hope that 
he missed his last injury he's going to get. It will all be behind him once he's through the, the, whatever it is he's dealing with. So it was good to kind of see him. Got a goal. Um, good to see him on the score sheet again. Good to kind of see him just look like he, oh, he had good body language. He was smiling. He was challenging for everything. He scored and ran over to the fans and kind of um, up the, yeah. him up. Yeah, they were just kind of playing around and, you know, at some dudes, like some goals were doing the, you know, having a pull out. And so it was great to see how they were there and it just, just looked like more attempts at attacking the team when we got them on the pitch. Yeah, I mean, if we get a few more like players around, around and a bit more, I think that's my only pet hate about the current system is that you just don't get enough people into the box to help. You know, we've got like five midfielders on the pitch where. As obviously we know he likes to play but so from what we've been doing it with five players and at least one or two and got like a couple of them. It's not like we got five defenders on there, but he was just last night. Like I think if he was fit all season, we'd be I'm not saying we'd be well away from danger, but we wouldn't be where we are right now. And I'm thinking just like the one touch did yesterday where he jumped up, hopped it up in the air and then outpaces the defender and wins as a throw in. We get up like 70 yards, 60 yards out of nothing. Like, had that all season, you know, simple. He's not good enough. Yes, more pays. Well, no, no, no way near the answer. And yeah. And obviously Demaya Gray obviously brought some good things, but he's never, never in that. Not 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 so it's, it, it makes a huge difference. And obviously, again, you, you, you're kind of thinking if this does pay off and he does score two or three goals, or he doesn't score, like even if he just like the, the second goal is because he, he challenges and because he makes something happen. That's more pay maybe. And they just headed away, or, or whatever. That he won the pen as well, of course. And obviously, he could have scored another goal, was a penalty, which you know, I was very nervous for. That. You think I mean, he missed his last one, didn't he? Against, uh, yeah, so, nice. funnily enough, but we've been so much better off with him in the team. But you just hope now that if, he, if this does come right and I'm out of the line, like for two or three more weeks, and maybe possibly need to be. Fit enough to run about for 45 minutes. If that does pay off again, I don't think I'd say that just got it right, but only time will tell, obviously. We'll have to wait. But again, you mentioned the Wobbies goal. I don't think Ian Lenko whips that, or McNeil whips that cross in. Albert Lewin's right in the box. So, you know, just the fact that we're getting crosses into the box. Yeah. That's more than we were managing before he was back in the team. So, yeah, and I think that. even even with um, the one that you should have, well, it looked like you should have scored. Did see a very slow replay of it today, where it take the cross from McNeil took like a nick off someone, and just have a little heel and go straight to the goalie clubs, and then they know they scored down the other end. But again, even stuff like that, we're not getting two or three weeks ago. Good amount of times, the pull back to the wingers getting the ball. Oh, I didn't know one at all in the box. The glory is maybe getting towards there, but made a massive difference. Huge. Yeah. I think that's the one thing we'll have to take as a positive away from it. For, even for the games that don't feel that winnable on the evening, that we all have easy to see even last night than we have done well, probably all season. Yeah. 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 It's not been many games we've played well. No. All season. No. All season. Yeah. Um, we need, I think, six points, um, at least four. Both both of them, look, look at that team last night, the way they performed and the play in a minute. You'd look at them and you think that team should win two. That that team ordinarily could win two games out of four. Team could lose. Our team or Leicester team. Our team. Look at that team last night. Basically, we've got four games left and we can't afford, I think, to lose. Uh, but you'd look at that team and think that team could play well enough. The opposition is not saying we will, but it's not you know a massive, massive shock if it happens. We've got a five four. This is the time to. Oh yeah. We can still. It look, looks like we are well capable of getting points on paper. We just need certain things to break for us. We need the manager to make the right decisions at the right moments. We need players who to be in the team and stay in the team and do all the right things like how Loom was doing last night, like what like Neil was doing last night. He's another one I think like really bit of help. Maybe his best game for Everton so far. Michael Enko looked a lot better than he has in recent weeks. Um, Bore was another player who had a really good showing. I'm not necessarily a fan of Corre, but what he was a real difference last night. He was everywhere. And James Arnett as well. Mm-hmm. I've not seen you know, I 
looked at my thoughts, you know what, if he'd been fit for three or four months straight, he would have been a big thing. Side, so. Yeah, we, we had a lot as in he built that little we'll football break when I think about it. We did. We and did. the love one, I was really happy to see Patterson back. Yeah, yeah. I know he's got flaws, but it's, it's a bit more dynamic, isn't he? And he just gives us something a bit different. Uh, if he's on, well, whilst we've got him on the books, we've got our, our senior right back injured now, we might as well use him because the alternative is Ben Godfrey. Yeah. We've seen Ben Godfrey is not the answer. Yeah, what, what, what other choice have we got? Um, Stick another um, yeah. set of half out there, but it's really bad at other times, and that hasn't really worked either. So just give give Nathan Patterson a chance now. He was signed to play. Well, you need a right back to come into the team. Why not sign the kids who we used to play there? Just sign the kids who we play the kids who we signed specifically for that position. And at least, and I, 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 don't, I mean, I don't think Patterson is, I don't think anyone thinks Patterson's ready, obviously, because he's, he's still so young. He's basically barely played in the game here, but. Even if he's got defensive deficiencies, oh my God, we've got them. But at least passing can go forward. At least he can offer something. Oh. Line, yeah, he can do. He can do something in the opposition there. And that, if he plays Godfrey right back against Brighton, I know Matoma. I assume he plays. Didn't play last week any on the bench, wasn't he? But assuming he plays next week, I know it's going to be a tough ask whoever plays out there. So at least someone there who can give us something going forward. Maybe stay the length, stand them back the other way a little bit. That's yeah. I would say, yeah, uh, Brighton wants uh, Nathan Patterson to play at least out of all our right back options. Yeah. They'll be happy for Ben Goddard to be there or for Mason Hall to be there. They might be happy if Nathan Patterson's there, but they won't be as happy if it's the two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, at least you can, like, like James Jones said, he's in trouble. Yeah. Whereas the other two have gone off and off. Exactly. Yeah. We'll leave it at that anyway for the um, extra time. Less than two Everton. So let us know your opinions, get your comments coming in and Give this video a like. Content until next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in on the top of the road.